Of course, gonna thank Jörg for this. This is his tool, his idea, his invention, so he gets all the credit. I'm just gonna be using it. <laughs> That's a few shots. Beautiful, of course. Hey. There we go. And of course, when watching this, I think many people are completely enraptured by the speed aspect. Hey, what happened there? Ah, oh, we got a weapon jam. Still stuck in there, but I think we've released the pressure on it so we can use our uh, ramrod. <laughs> um, there we go. That's a dry fire. All right, did it feed? No. That's a pretty slow load, but it fed properly. Nice, good accurate shooting. And I think him up there, that's fine. Let's push back in. Fed. All right, that's the fun over. <laughs> All right, it is, it is a fun toy to play with. So um, this has been trending a lot, and people love seeing this in different versions of it. Of course, this is the latest version, so there are limitations of what I can do and how fast I can shoot. But basically, it's a tool which the primary advantage is that it allows someone who isn't well trained to shoot very quickly. Now, I want to talk about some of the theories which people have been putting forward, some of the hypothetical situations where you could go back and equip an army with this. And when people try to implant this uh, anachronistic invention into history, I think we kind of make some very broad assumptions over uh, the nature of warfare. And I think it's a good to talk about how warfare played out in most cases and debunk some of the myths around uh, bows and arrows and firearms and perhaps uncover why this tool might not have been invented or might not be plausible apart from a few very specific situations. Now the predominant theory which many people are imagining is if you gave every single soldier a repeating bow like this and the doctrine would be to have something like fire by rank. So the first row shoots, then kneels and reloads, the second row shoots, the third row shoots, and so on. Uh, so this is very much inspired by uh, musket warfare, the gunpowder era, and I think this is a bit excessive. I don't think it really uses this to, it, to its full potential. Um, the reason why fire by rank is quite important as a military doctrine is that you have a very, very long reload for muskets. It takes around 15 to 20 seconds to load a musket. So there's a lot of downtime. Therefore, you want all three ranks shooting so that by the time the third rank is done, the first rank is finished reloading and you continue the pattern. This doesn't take 20 seconds to reload. It takes five seconds, which is about the same time as a single arrow. So just as a normal archer unit would not need to fire by rank or shoot by rank, you wouldn't need to fire by rank on this either because the time it takes to load and shoot again is too short to actually fire by rank. Um, I think from a commander point of view, if this is doctrine, you'd want to have more people shooting at once with greater volume rather than having to stagger the ranks because you shoot as fast as you can load. Um, so you basically fire at will rather than fire by rank. Now that said, I don't think we should be seeing this as the equivalent of a medieval musket. In terms of like muskets, the equivalent would be crossbows. Uh, crossbows, very powerful, easy to use, and take a long time to reload. Well, not a long time, but longer than a bow. So if you're going to compare um, doctrine, well, crossbows didn't really fire by rank. In some military doctrines, some might rotate their ranks, but you wouldn't really fire by rank the same way as a musket in formation. So uh, that's what they keep in mind. I think the equivalent of firearms would be if this was a repeating rifle. It's based off a repeating rifle, the Spencer or the Henry rifle, 
uh, and the regular bow at the same speed as the breech loader rifle, the single shot ones. So you have crossbows as muskets, you have well, muzzle loading muskets, you've got uh, the regular bows as breech loaders, and you have these repeating bows as repeaters. So they do have some analogs to firearms. The big thing that's different, however, and I think we really have to emphasize this particular uh, uniqueness is that a bolt or an arrow is not that lethal. So compared to a bullet where getting hit by one will probably result in a serious injury or death, an arrow would not be that lethal. Understand that when guns were used, and the reason why guns were used and adopted as a standard weapon is because there was no defense against it. So you couldn't block and a bullet you, you couldn't have a piece of armor that was thick enough to stop a bullet so um, that's why the gun eventually became the dominant weapon you know initially it was pike and shot then they reduced the ratio of pikes and uh, having more guns and eventually having even have guns because the gun was the superior weapon better range better um, lethality more effect on the battle and that was crucial the bow and arrow never had that impact because the bow always had to contend with armor. Helmets, shields, uh, armor, firstly mail or textile armor, then later plate armor. And while it had some effect in some situations, arrows were not, not that lethal. Uh, and battlefield records actually show very few casualties caused by arrows alone. So maybe wounds, not necessarily deaths. So having a lot of people shooting a lot of arrows, like literally every single person having a missile weapon, may be too excessive. You are pouring a lot of resources into equipping your army with these repeating bows, with lots of ammunition. Because remember, arrows aren't cheap to make, you know, and this, this isn't a mass-produced scale, this is all handmade. So having the resources and the infrastructure to produce bows and arrows at this scale, about 10,000 plus, then you simply have a lot of investment into a weapon which does not have the impact that you need. It's not artillery, it's not a machine gun, it's not a, um, a firearm. It doesn't guarantee that what you hit will be effective. Understand that bows and to a lesser extent crossbows were always a specialized tool. So the best warriors, the best fighters, the most skilled shooters would use bows. You wouldn't give a bow to a peasant or you wouldn't give a bow to someone who have no training. Uh, crossbows perhaps, you know, once you teach someone to use one, they're pretty easy to use. But a normal bow requires skill, it requires strength to use, it requires skill to use. So as much as these bows are meant for novices or meant for people with little training to shoot quickly, remember that this bow doesn't shoot quicker, more accurately or more powerful than a normal bow. And I don't think this would be a good militia weapon. If you're gonna give militia a weapon, give them a normal crossbow. Um, you can one shot a knight you know, as a peasant. And that's one of the complaints we had about the crossbow. Uh, if you don't want to give them a ranged weapon, give them a spear or a shield or a helmet. Uh, just, just do what most people do in, in the Middle Ages, and that's fight in the front line. Uh, you, you wouldn't really give a bow to someone who can't use one. That, that's one of my arguments. And in the end, if you're going to train with a weapon like this and make a doctrine, you kind of don't really have advantages because any kind of training, once you have more like an hour of training, you eliminate most of the problems bows have. And if once you have a month of training or a couple of months of training, or half a year of training, even just infrequent once a week, you can learn most of the skills which a good archer needs to shoot straight, to knock quickly, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a, an, a bad archer, I'm not a novice, but I'm not a professional archer either. I'm not a skilled speed shooter. But if you're trying to shoot quickly, you can shoot quickly. You give someone a basic weak like bow, they can already use one. It's not that hard to use a bow and arrow. Is it hard to use it very well? Yes. But it's not hard to learn how to use one. And you can probably equip militia with bows or crossbows as they were. The added benefit of shooting quickly doesn't seem to be a benefit. In the end, if you have people who shoot bows badly, giving them one of these might end up having a formation of militia which shoot these really quickly but really badly.
Now, could this be used on horseback then? Given that you know, horse archers need to shoot quite quickly, you have small windows of engagement, and uh, there's definitely um, precedent. We have uh, m many of the cavalry uh, uh, fighters using uh, repeating rifles. Uh, say, for example, in the Civil War, there was at least one unit, the, the Lightning uh, Brigade, which used uh, spinter rifles. And uh, there are many course, people who shoot um, very accurately on horseback with repeating rifles. So, could it be done? Yeah. The thing with guns, again, is that you have lethality. So in the time of the bow and arrow, you generally weren't fighting against people who were shooting back at you. So if you're a horse um, archer, you're an army of horse archers, you can ride across a line of, say, 5, 10, 15 seconds and just continually shoot arrows and they're not going to shoot anything back at you. Now they might have skirmishes, maybe javelins, slingers, uh, other archers, you might return fire and that's a fair point there and usually when horse archers were up against organized uh, infantry they were outshot and were defeated. So that, that's a weakness if you have no counter, a range counter to horse archers but for the most part horse archers would engage um, enemies of opportunity so they would basically ride past, go in a circle and just continually pelt arrows. So to that extent, because you weren't generally at risk of being shot back, you could spend longer in battle to shoot more arrows. Hence why it wasn't so important that a horse archer shoot like 10 arrows in 3 seconds. You can shoot 10 arrows in 10 seconds or 10 arrows in 15 or 20 seconds. Still very rapid for an archer, but you, weren't, you didn't have the immediate threat. Now with firearms, quite different again, because you have, first of all, you're a huge target, you're, you're, you're a guy on a horse, so you're over 2 meters tall, 3 meters tall, you're a big target, you get hit, the horse get hit, you get hit, you go down. You're up against people with muskets or rifles who are shooting back at you, and one shot can bring you down. So there is a much greater cause to reduce the engagement time for firearms. So a cavalryman shooting off horseback needs to minimize their engagement time. In many cases, the fort dismounted. So you would get off the horse, find a better position and fight from there. But you fight them on horseback, go in, shoot quickly, then get out as soon as possible because you're going to have a lot of um, bullets flying, your say arrows. You're going to have a lot of bullets flying your way and one bullet can bring you down. And that's, I think, one of the biggest distinctions we need to make with ammunition. Bullets are very lethal with no defense. Arrows, if it hits you, it might not penetrate your armor. So you've got a, an extra layer of defense, which is generally quite effective against arrows, generally. So my thoughts at this point, after you know a few months of using it, listening to uh, some of the, uh, the feedback and some of the suggestions, I still don't think this would have a particular role. Um, at best, maybe home defense or local defense, so someone who has never held a bow, never used one, never trained with one, could possibly use one of these to some effect because you just feed arrows and shoot. You don't have to load or knock or shoot quickly. So this, this might be good home defense. In the same way the Chukou Nu in China would have been used for local defense. Um, but the moment you start training with the bow, then you overcome most of the limitations the bow has and you kind of like nullify the advantages of having a beginner friendly bow. Because one thing that's important to remember is that this does not amplify firepower. This isn't like a machine gun where you can replace the entire um, company of soldiers with one machine gun because normally the machine gun adds to the firepower. This is not a multiplier, it's basically replacing someone with a regular bow who can shoot a sustained rate of fire with a burst fire weapon. Overall, the speed's the same, or roughly the same. So you're not replacing it with a better weapon. It's an easier weapon, but not a better weapon. But once you get past having a few people and you start reaching army level of size, then the numbers don't matter anymore. Because if you have a thousand archers or five thousand archers, then you've got thousands of arrows already flying through the air. You already have the critical mass, the volume, the, the arrow storm, the blocking out the sun um, volume with normal bows and arrows. Having lots of these shooting lots more arrows wouldn't really change anything, especially if you're compromising other things. 
remember these things operate best with lower draw weights so if you're shooting lower draw weights um, with lesser skilled archers shooting more inaccurately perhaps faster i know is, is it really worth the trade-off so Anyway, those are my thoughts. I mean, these aren't really organized, but I just had a lot of things in the back of my mind, shooting this and just looking at the feedback. It's a fun thought experiment. And I think if you're making like a fantasy scenario and using this as a fantasy weapon, it might be plausible. You know, you might have a um, society which only uses bows and no crossbows for some reason. Uh, or you might have a lot of bows which people are adapting. I don't know. There, there, there's definitely a way to make this work somehow. But in the end, I think that someone who develops the skills as an archer will outperform what this can do. This is a good crutch for someone with zero skill, but if you start training, then you start picking up the skills which will negate this. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? And uh, if you have a better suggestion how to implement this in a historical or a pseudo-historical situation, how would you do it? Post your thoughts below. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll enjoy more of this in the future.